Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be testing out a bunch of new makeup products. I haven't done a video like this in a little while, and I actually haven't worn very much makeup over the last week. We were out of town with my family on vacation, and I feel like when I'm traveling, I go a little bit more minimal with makeup, so I'm ready to apply all the makeup. I have a bunch of hyped up viral makeup products that I'm going to try in today's video and see if they're worth the money or not, worth the hype or not, and then a couple of new launches as well. I do want to say thank you to City Beauty for sponsoring this portion of today's video. I've been testing out their newest launch, and it is so good. So it's available now. So I wanted to share it with you in today's video. This is the City Lips Night Oil. I am a big lip oil fan. If you've been around for a little while, you probably know that I've tried so many lip oils over the past few years, especially. And I think the issue with a lot of lip oils is while they feel good initially, once they wear off, you lose any sort of benefit you were receiving while the product was on. And sometimes after they wear off, I feel like my lips feel worse than they did before I apply the product. Like some of them end up drying my lips out completely. That is not the case with this one from City Beauty. This one has immediate and long-term benefits. It feels so good on the lips. So this is a night oil. So typically I do use it at night before I go to bed and then it works overnight and in the morning when I wake up, my lips are super hydrated, really plump, but you can also use it during the day too. I feel like it is a really nice option to prep your lips before you go in with makeup. And today I'm using a lip stain later, which can really enhance any fine lines, any dryness. So I do feel like this comes in handy during the day as well. So this feels really plush as you apply it. It has really good ingredients that actually help your lips retain moisture. And in turn, they're going to be more hydrated and more plump when you use this product. I notice the more I use it, the more I see those long-term benefits. It definitely helps to smooth out any fine lines. Again, my lips are just very, very hydrated when I use it, and it does have exfoliating properties as well. So if you deal with dryness or your lips are, you know, a little bit crusty in the morning, this is really nice to use before you do your makeup. So it is marketed as a night oil, and I am using it at night, but I also like to use it in the morning as well. This does have a really nice, fresh, minty scent. It's not overpowering, and there's no stinging or burning at all, but I definitely still find that it plumps up my lips and, again, makes them look and feel really, really smooth. So this is a new product, but they did give me a coupon code. So if you use the code INDRIAM, you can get 15% off your order, which is really, really nice. This is something that I will use continuously and actually use up fully because again, I see those immediate results, but also the long-term benefits. So I'm excited to keep using it and incorporating it into my routine. If you are someone who deals with dry lips or you have chapped lips, if the winter has been really harsh on your skin or you just have thin or even wrinkly lips, this product is something you will love. It makes such a difference. So thanks again to City Beauty for sponsoring this portion of today's video. So let's start with the complexion. I do have a new primer to try out. This is kind of like a skincare primer all in one. It's from Glow Recipe. I really like their products. This is the Strawberry BHA Pore Smooth Blur Drops. Here's what the packaging looks like. It is super cute. So you just twist off the lid and then you squeeze a little bit out. It's supposed to immediately blur the look of skin and then absorb oil for a natural soft focus satin finish. That sounds perfect for my skin. So you can use this as like a skincare product in your skincare routine, but if you're going to use it as a primer, they say to use as like the last step of your skincare routine and allow it to fully absorb before applying any makeup. It does have a little bit of a strawberry scent, but it's not overpowering. I feel like a lot of Glow Recipe products are very, very scented, but this one is not as intense as some of their watermelon products, I would say. Okay, it's definitely applying really nicely. I do feel like it is sinking in quickly. Okay, my skin feels very smooth. It does kind of feel and look blurred, which is interesting. I wasn't expecting it to work so quickly. I do think it feels mattified, but it's not over the top matte, like it feels hydrated as well. It just feels good, so we'll see how it wears under makeup. I am going to use my go-to foundation, which I feel like I always use in testing new makeup videos, unless I'm actually testing a new foundation. But today I'm testing a new primer, a new concealer, and a new powder, so I wanna make sure my foundation is something I know works extremely well. And this is a favorite of mine. It is my favorite, it's the Catrice True Skin. I have the shade Neutral Sand. I actually just repurchased this because I used it up fully. I was going to use the House Labs foundation because I did get a mix-in to lighten the one I have because the one I have is just a little bit too dark. But again, because I am using so many new base products, I really just wanna make sure I'm using a foundation I know is super consistent. Otherwise, it's hard to judge what's working and what isn't. Okay, that Glow Recipe product definitely mattified my skin. So I don't use a ton of mattifying primers these days. I feel like a lot of the products I'm using 
are more on the hydrating side, more on the glowy side. But again, I can just tell because I use this foundation so much that it looks way more matte than it normally does, which is fine. That's actually one of the reasons why I like this foundation because I do feel like it is customizable. It tends to work well with hydrating primers, with mattifying primers. But wow, my skin looks really good so far. Like definitely smooth, matte, blurred. I, I have high hopes for this primer. So here's what my foundation looks like. I think this actually went on so nicely on top of this primer. Normally when I wear this, it does have more of like a natural satin finish, but it looks like fully matte today. And it's wearing so well, or it applied so well right here. I usually have texture right here and no foundation looks good in this area, but it went on very smoothly, really, really evenly. We'll see how it wears. I do have a new concealer to test out in today's video. This is not a brand new launch, but I know this has gotten so much hype ever since I launched it. It is the Milk Makeup Future Fluid All Over Cream Concealer. So I got the shade 5W. I'm hoping that works for me. My big thing with concealer is I just don't want it to be too, too dark. I actually think this will be a perfect match for me. It's a little bit light on the back of my hand. I think I got a little tan. Like I said, we were out of town with my family on vacation. Normally I don't get tan, but I also don't usually spend a lot of time out in the sun. And we were just outside by the pool. We were at Disney one day, so I feel like I guess I did get a little bit tan. So I just wanted to start with a small amount because I'm not sure how this will apply, but let me just blend this in. The last new concealer I tried was the Urban Decay Stay Naked Quickie, and that one's really good. Actually, this feels very, very lightweight on the skin. I don't know why, but I thought it was going to feel really heavy, so I think I, I didn't avoid it. I just, it wasn't necessarily at like the top of my list. But wow, this feels very light on the skin. It already looks smooth and velvety. I'm glad I went in with a smaller amount because I do feel like it is more of a full coverage concealer. So I think if I over applied it, it might have a tendency to look a little bit cakey, but I don't know. It looks very lightweight on the skin. That looks so good. It looks so smooth on the skin. I feel like that's a perfect shade match. We are off to such a good start. I don't know why I'm surprised. I mean, I chose like viral hyped up makeup products. But again, sometimes viral hyped up makeup products don't really work. But so far, so good. I like the primer, I like the concealer. Let's test out this new powder. This is from House Labs. Again, not a brand new powder, but I've heard such good things about it. It is the Bio Blurring Loose Setting Powder, and I got the shade Translucent. So let me take off the lid and see what it looks like. I think this one has a net. I'm pretty sure it's like a net style packaging. It is. I don't think I'm going to go in with a beauty sponge or like a velour puff to really set the under eyes. I think I'm just going to use a brush and use a light amount of powder. Oh, you know what? I actually have these new brushes from Sigma I wanted to try out. This is the Sigma Kristen Dominique set. It comes with six never before seen brushes. So I'm a little bit newer to Sigma. They've sent me a couple of things over the last few months and their brushes are really, really good. I know they get a ton of hype on social media, but I understand the hype. I've purchased a couple of their brushes over the years as well. But again, I don't have like a full collection of their brushes, so I'm not super familiar as to which ones these would compare to, but they did say they are never before seen. So if you have a lot of Sigma brushes, this could potentially still be a good set. So mainly face brushes, and then it looks like you get one eye brush as well. This is the Brighten and Bake brush. So it does have a net. I'm just going to tap it in, tap off the excess, and then set my under eye. I have been using like a velour puff to set the under eyes, but I feel like because I do have on like a matte primer, more of a full coverage matte concealer, the velour puff might be a little bit too much. I feel like I'm applying this awkwardly. This powder is very lightweight. Very, very smoothing. Okay, I feel like I'm just having such good luck today. So my favorite, or no, what am I trying to say? I recently tried the Milani setting powder, which is so good, it's so smoothing, but the color is a little bit dark for me, so it almost makes my skin look kind of orangey. And I feel like this is giving the same effect, but it doesn't have that orangey look to it. It does come in different shades, so I have the translucent shade, but if you are looking for a deeper shade, they do have other options. But wow, this looks so good on the skin. 
I am going to apply powder to the rest of my face, but first I want to apply the cream cheek products I'm going to be using. So I'm going to start with bronzer or like bronzer contour. This is from Tower 28. It's their new Sculptino and I have the shade Getty. I'm trying to decide which brush to use. Okay, this one is the face contour brush. We'll go with this one. So this is not a brand new product to me, but I wanted to actually use it on camera because I don't think I have. So it goes on nicely. I like the Tower 28 blushes. I find that they stay in place very, very well. So if you are a fan of more like long lasting cream products, I do think Tower 28 has some great options. They do have a product called the Bronzino. I think that's what it's called. I don't know why, where I would have gotten that name if that's not what it's called. But I believe that one has shimmer in it. I think that's more of like a luminous bronzer, whereas this one is meant to be like a bronzer contour all in one. But it applies really nicely. It's not overly dewy or overly luminous. I feel like it sits on the skin well. And again, because I have more of that matte base underneath, I feel like it is kind of toning it down a little bit. Usually I go in with a little bit of a heavy hand because I do feel like once I set everything with powder, it almost tones it down a little bit. And I don't prefer to go in with like a powder bronzer on top of a cream bronzer and a powder blush on top of a cream blush. I just feel like then I'm applying too much product. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like inevitably whenever I'm wearing cream cheek products and I'm using a brush to like stipple the product on, I'm going to end up with some of the foundation underneath picking up a little bit. Some do it worse than others, but I feel like some people are like, oh, this product really picks up my foundation. Oh, this doesn't pick up my foundation at all. Inevitably, I noticed that it's going to move around a little bit. I'm just going to go in with my foundation brush and kind of soften the edges a little bit. For blush, I have a few different options. I'm not sure which one to go with. So I do have two of the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Matte Beauty Blush ones. They did send these to me in the mail as PR, so I thought I would try them out. I have Pink Pop, and then I also have Pillow Talk. But I also have this blush from Too Faced, which I'm curious to try as well. This is the Cloud Crush Blurring Blush, and I have the shade Candy Cloud. Actually, it's Candy Clouds. It's like one of those really bright pink blushes. I feel like this could be such a pretty option too. I don't know which one to try. I, I'm really kind of leaning toward Pillow Talk. Let me swatch it, and then we'll see. I'm kind of nervous about this one because... It is a matte liquid blush. I feel like I'm a little bit newer to liquid blush in general, but I don't know about like a matte liquid blush. I guess I've tried some from Rare Beauty and they've worked out well. This is like a sheer swatch of it. I, I feel like I'll go with this one. Liquid cheek products just really intimidate me. Is that too much? I probably should have just gone in with one. All right, I'm just gonna go for it. I applied two dots and I'm going to blend it out with this brush. Okay. It's intense, it's vibrant, but the color is really, really pretty. See, again, I just feel like inevitably it's going to end up removing like a little bit of my foundation underneath. If you guys use a lot of cream products, does that happen to you? I feel like no matter what I use, like that always happens if I use any sort of cream blush or liquid blush. So now you can really see like the freckles on this side which is fine because I feel like it ends up making things look a little bit more natural, but you can see the difference. Like this removes a lot of my foundation, whereas it's still in place on this side. When I first started applying that blush, I thought it was going to be really intense, but it blended away and now it looks very, very light. So I'm actually going to go in with a little bit more. I applied it on the back of my hand because I feel like as you blend it out, it really fades. Now I feel like I went in with a little bit too much. I feel like somewhere in the middle probably would have been more ideal. I don't know, it looks a little bit, it looks a little patchy on my skin. And again, I mean, it did remove the foundation. You know what, like now that I say all of that, I don't think the Rare Beauty blushes really do end up removing a lot of my foundation. Maybe a little bit, but not to this level. I'm just not really sold on this blush. I feel like it looks a little bit patchy on my skin. It ended up erasing more foundation than I thought it would. I am going to go in with powder and set the rest of the face. So this is the setting powder brush. These brushes are really nice. They're very, very soft. They feel really nice on the skin as I'm applying them. I do think they seem to work well with creams and powders, but I don't know if I'm just having better luck with the powder. I feel like they're applying the powder perfectly. I know I just said I don't usually like to apply powder, bronzers, and blushes on top of cream bronzers and blushes, but I feel like I almost have to. I'm just using a little bit of my Beauty Pie bronzer. This one is in the shade Sunnyside. I think I just did a little bit too much blending trying to make that Charlotte Tilbury product blend out, so I just feel like I need to kind of 
touch it up a little bit. For eyes, I don't have a brand new palette, but I do have one that's a little bit newer that I thought I would use in today's video. I've definitely been on like a pink eyeshadow kick. I'm pretty sure this one's already on sale. So if you are curious about it, you can get it, I think for like 50% off last time I saw. Too Faced already launched a new palette since this one, so it's kind of old news, but I figured I would still use it. This is the Pinkier Times Ahead palette. So I'm going to start with this shade. I'm not going to do anything over the top. I'm just going to do like a soft pink look. I've really been into pink eyeshadow lately. I feel like I should probably do something, well I was going to do something a little bit more neutral today, but again, I don't have a brand new palette to use in today's video. I don't know, I just haven't seen like a really exciting palette launch in a while, so nothing has really caught my eye. I used to love pink and purple eyeshadow, and then I kind of got away from it, and I wasn't wearing like a ton of eyeshadow, and when I was, it was definitely more on the neutral side. But this spring, like all I want to wear is pink. And then I'll just do the other eye off camera to save some time. Now I kind of want to use some of the purples. So I think I'll take this shade in the crease as well. They're kind of similar tones. I don't know if this will make too much of a difference, but we'll give it a shot. I think it's been a little while since I've tried a Too Faced palette. These matte shadows are very, very powdery but really smooth, really easy to blend out. I'm going to take this shade on the lid and then I'll probably add a little bit of this one. I was thinking about going in with this, but I don't necessarily want to go over the top with the eyes today. I feel like just kind of like a softer spring look might be more ideal. This purple shadow is very underwhelming. It's very, very subtle, which isn't a bad thing, but like it, this is like the fourth time I'm applying it it just doesn't want to show up very well on the eyes. I'm not a fan of that one. Let's try the lighter shade. Yeah, I feel like the lighter shade is better. It's definitely brighter, more pigmented. I guess I kind of wanted more of like a sparkly finish. These are like soft satins, but in the pans, they look like they're going to be intense metallics. I just feel like this is a very mediocre palette. When I looked at the shimmers in the palette, I thought they were going to look a lot better on the eyes but wow they are incredibly underwhelming I mean I like built this one up three times probably twice for these and just once for this uh, these are not good I just grabbed this ColourPop Super Shock shadow in the shade Day Trippin I'm just going to take a little bit of this and just apply this on top I just feel like the look needs something extra and I feel like this will probably help at least a little bit I'm just blending a combination of the light pink and purple under the eyes to tie things together. The matte shadows are fine. I mean, they're not like the best mattes I've ever tried, but they do blend out very easily, but the shimmers are not good. So I really don't recommend wasting your money on this palette. I feel like if you want a pastel pinky purple palette, ColourPop has better options that are a lot less expensive. So before I finish the eyes like mascara and eyeliner, I just wanted to apply my brow gel so it has a chance to dry. I picked up this one from Glossier. I have been hearing about the boy brow for years and years, and now that Glossier is at Sephora, I thought I would finally try it out. So this one is in the shade brown. I feel like the big claim with this one is that it gives you like very fluffy brows, which I am into. So I'm excited to try this out. I feel like I've heard so many things about this over the years. It's applying nicely. Like it has a good amount of pigment to it. And I do feel like it's going to be able to hold my brows in place as well. Wow, okay, this has a lot of pigment to it. That is what it looks like on my brow compared to this one. That is more intense than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like more of a waxy texture. You know, the ColourPop brow gel came out soon after this one, and I feel like a lot of people were saying the ColourPop brow gel was like an alternative to this, but the ColourPop brow gel is not quite as intense. Let's see how it looks on this brow, because this is like my thin problem brow over here. It feels very lightweight, but it feels very wet. So that's why I like to apply my brow gel before I go in with my brow pen to define it because I like to let it dry down a little bit and then see where I'm at. So obviously I'm not going to leave my brows like this, but that is a little bit more intense than I thought it was going to be. But I feel like it's holding this one in place. Now that my brows are a little bit thicker, I do feel like not all brow gels I used to enjoy work as well because now, again, that they're a little bit thicker, the hairs are a little bit longer, I feel like they do fall faster. So some of my go-to brow gels just don't hold the hairs in place as well. While I wait for that to dry, I'm just going to go in with mascara. I'm going to be layering two. This is what I've been doing lately. I don't have a new mascara to share with you, so I'll show you what I've been loving. 
This is the Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara. This one is almost done. I feel like it's pretty much dried out, but I'm going to use it today. So I usually use this one as like my base mascara. So I like using this mascara first to really add a lot of volume. I think it does a great job of like lifting the lashes, making them look thick and curled. This is like the last time I can use it. I feel like it's dried out a lot. So it's not performing quite as good as it normally does, but it's still doing the it's still doing a good job. After I go in with a base layer of that, I've been using the Milani Highly Rated Lash Extensions Mascara to really add like a little more length. And I don't love this mascara on its own because I do think it has a tendency to get kind of clumpy, but I feel like paired with a volumizing mascara, it's so good because I just add like a light layer on top and it just extends my lashes to make them look a little bit longer. I just feel like this combo is so good. I have to go in and clean it up because I did get a little bit on my lid, but together they just work so well together. So let me do the other eye and I'll be right back. For the waterline, there is a new Too Faced Killer Liner shade in Killer Pink. I'm definitely curious to apply this. I've never really done pink liner on the waterline and I do love the Too Faced Killer Liners. I think they stay in place really, really well on the waterline. I feel like the pink is a little bit different than the light nude. Actually, Killer Cashmere, which is the light nude from this line, is one of my favorites. I don't know, I kind of like the pink, but I also feel like maybe it looks a little bit strange. Like, is it a little bit too much pink? Especially with the black mascara, I feel like maybe they contrast a little bit too much. I'm just going to apply a little bit of mascara on the lower lashes. Nothing too intense because I do feel like, again, with that pink liner, it might be a little bit too much. Just a little bit. Okay, I ended up cleaning up a lot of fallout. There was shimmer shadow, like, all in this area. And even the matte shadow, like, kind of fell in this area, too. And I don't know. I just don't think this palette is very good. I thought it was going to be a lot better just looking at it. I did take a little bit of this shadow as a brow bone highlight, but I really don't recommend picking this up. I think there are a lot of options out there that perform better at a lower price point. I'm just going to take the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pen in the shade Espresso and just fill in a couple of areas. So now that this has had the chance to dry down, I do think it is holding my brows in place well. Like they did not fall at all. It added a lot of volume to my brows as well. It's pretty dark, so I think, or it's pretty pigmented. So I think I would probably go in with a lighter hand to begin with next time around. I do have a tendency to be a little bit heavy handed with my brows anyway. So I feel like that's kind of the case with all brow products. But I'm impressed by this one. I understand the hype. I think it's doing a good job of holding my brows. It added color, definition, volume. They look good. I am going to go in with a little bit of this Too Faced blush. I Since I ended up cleaning up some of that fallout, I feel like it erased a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury blush, which I'm just, I wasn't really a big fan of anyway. So I feel like I could use a little something extra. And I almost feel like this would just kind of tie the entire look together. Since the eye look is so pink and so intense, this is kind of a larger a larger brush than I would typically use. It's just what I had on hand. I feel like that looks pretty. I maybe added a little bit too much. It's definitely a little bit brighter than I thought it was going to be, and it is like a true matte blush. I almost wish it had like a little bit of a glow to it. I know some of the blushes from this line did have a glow, but I feel like this looks very matte on the skin. So I think it's pretty, I don't know, I'm not necessarily sold on either blush, the Charlotte Tilbury one or this one, but I think this one looks more even on the skin. I definitely need highlighters. So I did end up picking up a new highlighter. This one is from Rare Beauty. I held out for a while and I finally decided to grab it because this gets so much hype and I want to see if it's worth the hype. I love a good highlighter. Honestly, I don't have too, too many in my collection right now. And I just felt like after waiting a few months and this still being on my wish list, it was time to try it out. So I got the shade Exhilarate. I'm just going to use the Sigma Kristen Dominique All Over Face Precision Brush. I'm fairly certain this is like an intense, oh, that is a lot more intense than I thought it was going to be. I knew it was going to be intense. I feel like I should have used a very small, precise brush. 
it's too much. Let's take the leftover on this side. That is an intense highlighter. And what, what did I do? Why did I apply it right here? I applied it like under my eye. This video started off strong, but I feel like it's been a little bit of a roller coaster. But all of that aside, this is a very, very pretty formula. It's so lightweight. Like it, it feels undetectable on the skin. And even though it was intense, like the actual texture of the product isn't noticeable. I kind of wanted to grab the pink one. I should have, I should have gotten the pink one, but I feel like the gold one, I'll end up wearing more. This is really, really gorgeous. I just wanna swatch it because it is so silky. Oh my gosh, I didn't think anything would be able to top my Becca highlighters, but I feel like maybe this one will. It's even lighter than those. It's so smooth on the skin, like it doesn't even feel like you're applying powder. I'm not trying to be overly dramatic about a highlighter. I'm just really surprised that it's so lightweight because it is really, really intense. So I'm excited to keep using this one. I'm glad that I bought it because I feel like it is worth the hype, like even just my first initial time trying it. But I'll keep you posted after I use it a little bit longer. The last product I am so excited to try is this one from Fenty. It is the Poutsicle Hydrating Lip Stain. So I know this had its big viral moment last year, but the shade that I've wanted has been out of stock, at least the last few times I tried. I've been holding out for the shade Berry Banger. There were a couple of other shades I thought would be really pretty, but this is the one I really, really wanted. So I don't know, do I wear a lip stain with this or a lip liner with this? I feel like I shouldn't because I wanna see if the actual stain works. I feel like I need something to just kind of outline the edges so I don't apply it outside of my lip line. My lips are hydrated from the lip oil earlier, so I don't think this will dry my lips out. Ooh, I'm so excited to try this. It feels very light, very glossy. I'm not sure this shade really goes. My makeup, what is going on? Like, I feel like it just doesn't flow today. Okay, so this is what it looks like on the lips. It went on really nicely. It's very, very comfortable, like very hydrating, really glossy. And once that glossy layer wears off, you're left with a stain. When this was going viral, everyone was removing like the top glossy layer, and then you could see the stain. I wouldn't normally do that if I was going to wear this because I like the glossy finish. But out of curiosity, I'm going to take it off and see what kind of stain it leaves behind. Okay, it definitely stains the lips. It's been a little while since I've had like a good lip stain in my collection because in the past, they've all been so drying. So that's the stain it leaves behind, really pretty. But I'm going to apply this back on top because I wanna see how long the gloss actually lasts. Okay, so this is the final look. Kind of a weird mix of colors in the end. I don't know that I would typically pair this eye look with this lip color or this lip color with this blush, but that's just kind of how it worked out. So this was like a roller coaster. I feel like the beginning was so good. I had so many amazing products I was trying, and then the middle was kind of off, and then the end, again, I tried some really good products. So anyway, let's just kind of go over them. This face primer, Really, really nice. I'm definitely curious to keep trying this out. I don't know that I would love it as a BHA serum at night because I do love my Polish Choice one and that one seems a little bit more intense, but I think that's what makes this maybe a little bit more ideal as a face primer. It doesn't feel quite as strong as Polish Choice. It feels a little bit more gentle. It definitely blurred my skin and left me with a really nice matte finish and products applied really nicely on top. As for the concealer, I'm definitely curious to keep using this one even more. It looks really good and when I did clean up that fallout and apply a little bit more concealer. It just made everything look so smooth, really, really even. So I'm enjoying this. We'll see how it wears throughout the day. The House Labs powder, so pretty, very lightweight, really, really blurring. And I like that it is like a true translucent shade on my skin tone compared to that Milani one, which was a little bit dark. This does come in darker shades. So if you need something deeper, they have that on Sephora's website. But again, I feel like this will be a staple. So that was like the high of the roller coaster. And then we moved into some cheek products. The Tower 28 Sculptino is nice. It's not my favorite cream bronzer I've ever tried. I would say I prefer Makeup Revolution and Makeup by Mario over this one. But if you love Tower 28 or they have a shade that would work better for you, I do think the formula is nice. It's just not quite as smooth as a couple of other options I've tried. I'm not a fan of the Charlotte Tilbury blush wand. I felt like it looked kind of patchy on my skin. It definitely erased my foundation. And after I like went in with the other blush, I felt like everything looked a little bit better. So I'll try it a few more times to see if it works better with other foundations or other brushes or techniques, but so far I'm not sold on this. Eyeshadow palette, a definite fail. I like how the look turned out in the end but the quality is not there with this product. I wouldn't even recommend picking it up on sale because I think there are just 
too many inconsistencies. The matte shadows are good, but very, very powdery, but the shimmer shadows are so lackluster, really underwhelming. So this is not worth it. The blush is pretty. It's not quite as bright as I thought it was going to be. Like it definitely looks more of like a true rosy pink on my cheeks. I think I thought it was going to be the color of my eyeshadow on my cheeks, but I don't know. I know everyone's been going crazy over like this blush color in particular, not just Too Faced, but like the Dior one, ColourPop has one. I just don't know that it's like an ideal shade for my skin tone. So the formula was nice. It went on really well. I just don't know that this blush will be a favorite of mine. I tried so many products. I don't know that I can even find all of them at this point. Glossier Boy Brow went on really nicely. I think I'm going to be a fan of this. I do feel like it locked my brows into place well. It filled them in nicely. We'll see. We'll see if it ends up replacing some of my other favorites, but I do think the quality is really, really good. So if you have any other Glossier recommendations, please let me know. I think I like this pink on the waterline. If I'm wearing a pink look, I feel like it looks good because typically I do put like a lighter nude in the waterline if I'm wearing pink. If I was wearing like a neutral look and I had this in the waterline, I think it would look a little bit off. But the Killer Liner formula is really, really good. It definitely stays in place well. It's very vibrant, really intense. And then this highlighter, I think this might be my favorite product that I tried today, either this or the face primer. It's just so silky, so smooth, so lightweight. I'm really glad I finally tried this out. I applied a little bit too much, but the actual formula is so, so pretty. And then the Fenty Lip Stain, it's really nice. We'll see how long the gloss lasts. I feel like I took it off to look at the stain and the stain was really pretty, but I like the glossy finish. And then the brush set is nice. I mean, it applied the products really well. These feel really, really high quality. I think out of all of them, I don't know that they're sold separately. You might only be able to get them as a set, but I think out of all of them, I'll probably be using the setting brush the most and then also like the smaller one that I used under the eyes. I think that's everything. I tried a ton of products in today's video. So some really good ones, some really bad ones. I'll definitely update you in a few weeks once I've had the chance to use everything a little bit more and I'll do some speed reviews. But thanks again for watching. Don't forget to check out the new City Lips Night Oil. I'll put a link in the description box below. You can use my code Indrea M to get 15% off and I will see you very soon with a new video. Bye.